Welcome back to Essential Scale Modeler, I'm Lee. Today we're going to do a review of the Neo for our water TRN1 trigger airbrush. Now you may remember not so long ago I did a review of the TRN2. Uh, now quick recap on this one. Uh, this was as you can see uh, a big um, airbrush. It came with a 0.5 needle, 4.5 needle, 0.45 needle. All these massive cups of 30 mil, a 15 mil, and a 20 odd mil cups, um, and uh, uh, 50 mil on that one. Sorry. And while it was a good airbrush, it's really, um, I would say, not a modeler's airbrush. Uh, I would say this is more for large scale painting and things like that. I mean, you know, just the size of the. Uh, the cups and everything give that away in itself but overall very good airbrush it behaved exceptionally well as well especially for the money so uh, I thought it'd be good to um, uh, grab one of these now now this is the TRN1 and this is um, what I am looking to do uh, with um, an airbrush I want an airbrush that's purely for base coats um, and because a lot of the base coats now are starting to be a bit thicker than you get normally so you want a slightly larger needle. This comes with a 0.35 needle, which is ideal for me for, for base coats and everything like that. I want to start using, uh, I use Vallejo, believe it or not, I use the Surface Primer quite a bit. Um, I like it, a lot of people don't. Uh, the AK stuff's quite thin, but um, I'm, I'm gonna, the, uh, the Badger Steinle Res, which um, we're hoping to sell soon as well, uh, which is a lot thicker, which need, you need a 0.3 or plus needle to, to get on with that. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a quick look at this. Uh, we'll have a quick unboxing of it and uh, and then we'll uh, see what we can see uh, in action. So uh, let's, okay, let's get into it. Okay, so we've got, uh, I'm going to take this one away because we've already done a review on this. If you want to have a look at what this one behaves like, then you know, I think the review is about probably about six or seven months ago. So have a look on there for that. So we're just going to take that away. Um, as far as comparison goes, I think they're pretty much the same airbrush, just needle and nozzle sizes and things like that, which are different. So if we have a look at the box here, we've got, as you can see, we've got uh, the typical Neo green box and everything. Um, and it's a, it's a solid box, comes in a very solid box and with a, a bit of a info on the back and everything about what you can use it for. I think we all know what we can use it for. Um, you then got inside, you've got this hard stuff which you can take out let's just take these out we've got the instructions underneath um and having a look nothing else on the back good keep this for modeling if you don't if you're gonna you know not use it for to store your uh airbrush in so we've got a, a quick start uh, guide on here just basically how to use a gravity airbrush and you know things like that and basically how to get air air and paint you know it's a dual action even though it's a trigger one so um let's have a look at the airbrush itself now, first impressions are, it's the same as the uh, the other one, the, the TRN2, it's a lovely weight, and uh, they really do sit in the hand quite well. Um, I've got to say, they're very comfy to use, which is why I want to use it for base coats, because I really want to get a nice flow as I go get the base stouts down, because it's probably the most important layer of paint on your model is the base, the base coat. Uh, what else we've got in there? We've got obviously a little, uh, looks like a little five mil, or two, three mil cup, sorry. Um, we've got and uh, a spanner obviously which is going to be for uh, adjusting the, the cleaning the tip and things like that so we're going to pop those back in um, I'm probably not going to use the three miller cut it's nice to have it um, but I'm not going to use it uh, I should be using this with the large cup uh, nice it comes with a cap the little one doesn't come with a cap I don't think it needs it um, and obviously you can unscrew this as well like so got the seals on here they're not uh, a I think they're rubber seals, so they might not be cellulose proof. Uh, so it might be worth checking that out on the website themselves, but I'm pretty sure that they're just normal seals, not web, web um, cellulose proof ones. So let's get this out of the way so you can have a proper look. Okay, so there you go, there's the airbrush. Um, very nice, you've got, uh, you've got uh, control on the back there for um, your trigger. As you can see, if I turn this, the trigger goes forward. If I turn it, you can feel the trigger back. And what this does is this stops uh, you over spraying. But you think, well, okay, that's the level of spray I want. 
when you when you test it and set it down, you say, right, okay, I'm gonna set that to there so that I can't overspray it, it will never go that far. So always a nice addition on an airbrush this because I actually do use it, even though you should be good in your control with a Traeger airbrush uh, and you're doing large areas, it's nice to have that to know you're not gonna have a big splurge of paint suddenly appear on your on your model. Now as far uh, other ways uh, taking it apart, if we just um, take this, you can see this just unscrews off the back here. Uh, and then you've got the normal setup. Just undo that and out pop your needle there. As you can see, it's quite a large needle, so 0.35 in here, I do believe. Uh, now the setup, cleaning an uh, airbrush like this is the same as any other, and you can undo this, and inside there's a mechanism to clean if you get uh, paint back up in the in the air wash in the airbrush. As you can see here, uh, a lot of trigger airbrushes do get uh, paint residue build up in there, so it's handy to be able to get into there and clean that. Now this is slightly different to other trigger airbrushes that I've had. In fact, there's something in there. Usually that hole is completely empty um, and you can get a cotton swab in there and everything, but not on this one. So let's take the, the needle guard off now the needle's out. Okay, so there you go. So you, know, you don't have to use the needle guard. If you're really good at spraying, you're not worried about dinging the needles, you don't have to use that at all. It is purely just a guard for the needle. It's not anything else whatsoever. Um, and then obviously you've got the next step Again, you're just taking the, the housing off, and there you've got the uh, the nozzle sat in there. So it's nice and new, it looks very nice indeed. Okay, so you've got to bring your spanner, spanner over your nozzle spanner, and it literally is undo that one or two twirls, and off you pop. And you can see you've got a seal on there as well, a little tiny seal. You can buy all these spare seals and everything from any eyewater dealer. So this means uh, you can get into there, clean all the inside there, you take the cup off as well, and you've got a pretty clean way to flow and uh, back and everything. Uh, the only thing I'd, I'd like to look at is uh, further, which I can't do now because of time and everything, but I'd have a look at trying to take this out. But this may be a new feature, um, maybe stopping all this crap that gets up here on the trigger airbrush. Um, but these are easy to, again, you can really take these apart quite considerably. You undo this nut here, you can take the handle off, you undo this screw here, the, the trigger comes off and then everything just comes apart naturally. Well, one thing I can always suggest with, uh, with regards to whenever you get an airbrush, don't be scared to take it apart, learn how it works. Once you learn how it works, it's so much easier to, to overcome any problems that you have or cleaning, anything like that. Take it, I've always, I've always, always taken apart airbrushes one or two times before I start using them, just so I know how they work. Uh, right, now you do this up obviously with the spanner very gently until you just feel it bite and then you just give it a tiny little thing. Not too much because you don't. You can thread these very easily and you certainly don't want to do that because that is a real pain to sort out. So you can put the cut back on. You know, everything only has to be finger tight on these, okay? You don't have to screw them so that you can never get them off again. It's a bit like mechanical stuff. You never do it too tight. So finger tight is enough. You don't need to overdo these and put the guard back on as well, and then you're all set. So we'll pop the needle back in. I always use my finger as a guide, all the way through, nice and easy. You can see it pop out the end. I always just give it a little tap, like so. Do it up, everything's all done up nicely. And then pop the housing back on, job done, okay? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this right back, so we've got maximum spray there you go, okay, so we're right there. Now, as you can see, trigger action is nice and smooth, okay? Uh, there's a little bit of play before it bites. It'll be interesting to see what that's like, because on the other one, that would the, the feedback on the uh, TRN2, this one on the trigger was absolutely fantastic. I have to say, uh, this one is much, really, really smooth, really nice indeed. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that this is gonna be the same. Now what I haven't done is I haven't given it a, a good going over with some super lube or anything like that, which you should do before you start using uh, um, an airbrush. I have uh, my little, uh, hang on, let me grab this for you. My little airbrush kit here. And then here I've got everything that I need to, to clean my airbrush uh, and everything. Always buy some of this super lube. Um, I think I got this years ago. I mean that will last donkey's years. It's only a tiny little thing, but 15 mil. Um, but that will last donkey's years. Literally just touch it on all your joints. Uh, when you take it apart, on all the screw parts inside, every little bit that's got thread and things like that, even up here and then needles, 
always do it with that and it just makes everything work that much better it really does give it a, an even feel to, to the airbrush uh, but anyway, so that's that's the airbrush. So far, I'm impressed. I love these these eye water ones. How they hold, how they sit in the hand. I really do because, especially for spraying for any length of time, um, you can see how that sits in the hand there, like that. You see, very, very natural. And if you're spraying for any length of time, let's say you're doing a big 132 or a big, you know, 1350 ship or whatever, you you, you know you, you're constantly pressing down it, and it, it really does. After a while, your knuckle does start to, to ache a bit. But this makes it ever so easy. It's just a natural, you know, movement. Um, and this is what I've got. I've got a couple of ships and a couple of big phantoms that I've got to do and things like that. So this is what I wanted to tie this out for. So I think what we'll do now is I'll hook this up. Uh, I've just got to put a, a quick uh, a quick connect adapter on the end here. We'll hook this up and give it a spray and see how we do. Right. Okay. So um, we've got uh, we've got this all hooked up now onto the the compressor and everything, as you can see. Um, I haven't used it yet whatsoever. So this is a proper virgin testing. I haven't even tried to use this whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some uh, grey primer because this is very fine. This primer from AK. Uh, so I want to make sure that this sprays this okay. Then I'm going to move on to the Vallejo surface primer which is much thicker, it's a polyurethane um, uh, uh, primer just like um, the Stylon Res from Badger which is something that I'll be using on Paul's Proviso in future. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I'm not going to put a lot in there, I'm just going to put a little bit in there um, just so we can get an idea. I've, I've given it a good shake already. Okay. And then we go, it's come out there. Okay, so I'm going to turn the fan on, all right? So uh, let's see if we can get some nice pictures and shapes and everything. First thing I notice is you can get some absolutely fantastic lines. Don't forget this isn't been thinned. This is at 25 PSI. If you have a look there, you can see some absolutely fantastically fine lines. I'm sorry, my overhead camera rod's broken, so I can't do the overhead one, but you see some fantastic lines there. So you get really nice, you've got pure air, and there's a biting point here. There you go, nothing comes out whatsoever. I'll just turn this down off for a bit, a second. So you've got a biting point here, right there, and nothing but air comes out there. So it's good because you know You've got that biting point, you know that you're not, if you go, don't go past that, you're not going to release any paint. I mean, it's good for drying after you've sprayed and everything like that, which I think we all do. Um, but as you can see from just from those few lines there, you can get some very fine work done. And that was my first go. So, uh, and you can see how it sprays nice and wide. I'm going to do a big section now just to see how it comes up. Just fill in this. Pull right back, hit the power, and get a really nice coverage. You see how it's not going down too thick? That's a really nice coverage. I've got to say, I like that. Let me just squeeze out the rest of that. There you go. It's a very nice indeed. Uh, really nice coverage that. I know it's hard to tell on, on towel, but I think I've been doing it long enough now that I know what it's going to come out like. So let me give the cup a quick clean. Okay. Obviously the best cleaner in the world at the moment or ever. And we're just going to give that a quick Now the good thing is because the um, the cup itself is a is a full closed cup. You can actually do the blowback on it. There you go. So that's nice because there's nothing worse than having those nozzle covers where they are just literally all holy and patchy and things like that. 
Right, one more spray through. Quick one with thinner, just to make sure you've got no cleaner residue in there. Okay, that looks good. Nice and clean, nice and easy to clean. Is there any problems with that whatsoever? Okay, so now we've done the uh, the AK, so we know that um, it sprays some nice thin primer very well. And that's pretty much the same consistency as most of the paint out there that you would lay down, like like Ataka or AK or you know Tamiya guns, the lot. So um, you can get some nice fine lines with it. I do like the control. I do like the control of a trigger brush. You do get some nice control off it, um, and it's especially good for hand-fisted modellers uh, like myself as well. Um, you tend to you can overspray and things like that. They're very very natural control. Especially for the Americans who like the guns, you know, got a nice trigger action. Uh, so we're going to try a bit of uh, the um, uh, polyurethane uh, Vallejo surface primer now. So we're just going to pop a little bit of this in there. Okay, we don't have to do extensive painting. Just managed to get a ton of it on my finger. Right. Okay. So we've got uh, that's we've got that in there now. Let's just get another bit of towel. I love the smell of this stuff. I do like the smell of the Vallejo, I must admit. It just smells completely different to anything else. So anyway, so we're back up to 25 PSI again. Pop the fan on and we'll see how we do. And as you can see, it sprays nicely. Give it a bit more welly. You think this is what this, I've primarily bought this brush for. And it comes out really nice, but you can still get fine work. Now the Vallejo stuff is hard to get fine lines with because it's not made for that at all. Uh, it is purely a, a, poly, a very thick primer but as you can see no problem there going down. Bit a nice coverage all the way. Fantastic. Very nice airbrush indeed. I like that. So straight away, I've, that's a, it's a thumbs up for me after using it with the two main thinners that I, primers that I use. Uh, what I am going to try it with very soon, as you can see, it's very easy to empty because of the large nozzle size. We're going to have another quick clean up. indeed. Now this stuff you should clean up straight away because it will leave a residue in your in your cup there or anything like that. It doesn't dry too particularly well uh, in airbrushes. You have to clean it out nice. I always give it three little blasts with the and that obviously with the cleaner sorry and then once it's all cleaned out a little swish round and then I go through with the thinner so you don't leave any cleaner residue in your airbrush cup because if you do you're going to contaminate your paint with the uh, with the cleaner so there you go uh i need to turn it off here sorry uh that's all come up very very nicely as you can see <laughs> okay nothing in there no no unusual crap around the residue around the the needle uh housing or anything like that on the guard uh, so I actually I really like that. I think that's that's going to be fantastic for laying down primers and everything. So we'll go back now. We'll do the final thoughts. Right then. So okay, final thoughts uh, for the Iowater TRN1. I really like it. I think it's a cracking little airbrush, as you can see. It's very nice. It's a lovely weight. 
I'm a fan of, of airbrushes that weigh a bit um, so you can actually feel like you've got something in your hand. Uh, some of these cheap, um, some of these uh, airbrushes that you get uh, don't really feel like you've got a proper bit of kit in your hand. I, I actually like it like this. So, um, but as you can see, very nicely moulded. Uh, the grip's lovely. It fits perfectly. I've got probably, I've got large hands, not medium or not extra large, but large. I always go large size glove and things like that. So, uh, and that fits really nicely. And I can't see any problems whatsoever with, you know, working with that for, for quite a time. Um, it's well presented in its box, obviously. Uh, I'd like to thank Martin at aircraft.net for um, uh, supplying this for a test and a review and everything. Um, great service over there as well from those guys. Uh, but uh, for me, I, I would like to say this is a total recommend. Um, I'm going to enjoy using this for my base coats. Uh, if you're like me and Paul, um, we all we 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 like a, a specific tool for a specific job. Um, and now I've got I've got this for for my primers. I've got a, an airbrush for gloss coat. I've got an airbrush for Alclads or cellulose base paints. And I've got an, uh, my H uh, H and S um, Infinity for painting normal acrylic paint. So I've now got my full stable of four airbrushes that uh, I want to use for all the different aspects of modeling. So, um, and it just makes it easier because you don't have to worry about have you left some cellulose in there or if you can put acrylic in there afterwards and such, and such contamination anyway. But it's a nice bit of kit. I think for the money, it's well worth it. Um, it you know, some of these uh, other brands that um, you have trigger feed uh, brushes, they're two, 300 pounds, you know, quite a lot. I think for the money, it's very nice indeed. Total reckon for me. I mean, it's a good nine out of ten for that. So, uh, uh, so yeah. So that is the Iwata uh, Neo for Iwata, should I say? TRN One Trigger Airbrush. Uh, recommend for me. Until next time. Take care. Bye bye.